guys, welcome back to my channel. Before anything else, before this learning session starts, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell button so you're always notified whenever I have new videos like this one. Okay, so we're not in our usual Gokoro House setting or Camille Cost setting. We're now at Curio Cavern, which is my furniture store here in LRI where we house all our Scandinavian furniture brands. So please do drop by if you're looking for awesome furniture and decor. Shampre my plug because, you know, we gotta raise funds. <laughs> but anyways, I have my laptop over here because I'm doing one of your most requested vlogs, which is a tutorial on editing photos. I always, always get questions from you guys like, what's my preset? How do I edit my photos? What's my filter and stuff like that honestly if you look at my Instagram feed if you truly truly observe you will notice that I don't have one set preset like I usually switch from different presets or different kinds of editing it usually depends on my mood or depends on the photo or just I've stopped being so anal when it comes to like really maintaining one specific filter for my feed so that's why I can't really do a tutorial on what my preset is or how I edit my photos because again I do so many different types of edits so instead of leaving you guys high and dry, I decided that I'll just do a tutorial on how I use Lightroom or how I edit my photos on Lightroom and how I usually start off. So here goes. This is my Lightroom tutorial or how to use Lightroom. So we have here my laptop and I already have Lightroom opened. So in case you guys don't know what Lightroom is, it's the software that I use to edit all of my photos on my phone or on my laptop. But I've decided to teach you guys how to use the Lightroom laptop version or desktop version because if you understand this, then for sure you'll understand how to use the mobile version or the app version. So Lightroom is really perfect for when you shoot raw images. I used to shoot with JPEG images for the longest time because I really didn't want to learn how to edit raw photos. But ever since switching to raw photos, there's really no turning back because when you shoot raw, you can easily toggle a lot of different things in your photo without ruining the quality. As opposed to when it's JPEG, if it's like, let's say you shot it in really, really dark, dark, dark lighting or really low lighting, then if you try to bring up the colors and bring up the lights and everything, it will for sure be a very noisy photo. When we say noisy, it's usually the grainy or like pixelated shot. That's what I mean. But if you don't know how to shoot raw or you're just shooting from your phone, fret not because I still do use Lightroom even if I shoot with my phone and it's in JPEG and it's not in raw. I'm sure a lot of pro people would prefer you to just use Photoshop instead of Lightroom but it still works for me so I do it. So this is how Lightroom looks. I've already chosen a few photos that I'll be editing. These were photos that I took in Europe. If you pull down the drop down menu, you'll see that I'm on the library, which is basically it's where all your photos are saved. So when you want to bring in a new photo or import a photo, then all you have to do is go through this arrow and just click import and then you can just import whatever photo that you want. So I've already imported these photos for us to edit for today's session, my dear students. Just have to click develop. So I've chosen this photo, so this was taken in Lisbon. So as you can see, it's kind of dark and you don't really see a lot of the colors pop out even if I'm using a really awesome camera which is the Leica Q. How I usually edit my photos is I start off by bringing up the shadows. So automatically you'll see that all the colors are popping out and you can finally see my face here. And then I bring down the highlights because I feel like this really brings out all the missing details that it got too light from the bringing up of the shadows. Not always but most of the time I usually put my shadows to the highest level and my highlights to the lowest level. I'm not super strict about it, I mean you can play with it but this is my way of seeing how the photo really really looks. But you might ask also that, how come I didn't just use the exposure? If I use exposure, you see how I've lost all of the details there because exposure is technically brightness, so it brightens the entire photo. You kind of lose a lot of the details. So for me really, if you want to see the state of your photo in the most detailed way possible, then it's really through shadows and highlights. So my next step is usually here. So I just follow the order that it's in. So I just bring up the exposure a little bit. And then the trick here is that if you want more details to come out, then you lower the contrast. You see, if you make the contrast super duper high, then the blacks are really blacks and the whites are really whites. I personally like to bring down the contrast just a little bit 
you could already see that it's starting to get a bit more HD. If you actually put clarity up, so clarity is kind of like sharpness and structure combined. So it's kind of like structure. If you use a lot of phone editing apps, then you probably are familiar with the word structure. So that's kind of like clarity. So if you put down the contrast, so basically you made it more HD, right? And you want the edges to be sharper, you just bring out the contrast a little bit. Because I brought down the highlights so much, I still want some of the parts to be kind of bright. So I bring out the white. So white is basically making the highlighted parts or the white parts even whiter. So you'll see the clouds here. If I bring up the whites, then it becomes brighter. Or it feels as if the highlights are also brighter. So if you look at also my cheek highlight, you see here, if I bring up the whites, ta-da! Basically, it brings out all the highlights. I feel like I'm not explaining this well because I don't know how to explain everything technically in a very pro-legit way, but I hope you understand me. So let's bring down the whites again. So I probably will just bring it up a tiny little bit more and then bring down the blacks. So basically, it's very easy to understand because when you say blacks, then it just means that if you put it down, then you're darkening all the blacks or the dark parts. And if you bring it up, then you're lightening all the black parts. So if you look at this part, for example, you'll see a lot of black parts there because of the shadows, right? So if you bring it down, it becomes even more prominent. But if you bring it up, then it becomes lighter. So for me, I'm gonna bring it just a tiny bit down just to balance out what I did with the contrast. So it's not so dead or it's not so gentle. So let's skip vibrance and saturation for now because technically for now, we're just talking about how to toggle the brightness and the contrast and the shadows and the whites and everything. So let's skip the colors. Let's do the colors afterwards because I am trying to be legit and so I'm trying to have a system here. Okay. So next is the tone curve. So you could actually choose between RGB, red, green, blue. So RGB basically means like the overall photo. So all the colors that are comprised here. So what I like to do is to put one point there, so one in the middle, and I try to bring it up just a little bit. And then if you want more, a little bit more contrast, or just to make it pop a little bit more, I make another point here. And then here towards the end, this is where you bring up the shadows. So I want to bring the shadows just a tiny bit up. You see what I did there? If I put it here, then it gets kind of weird. So it's nice for you to play around. So I bring it up a little bit. If you look here, you'd see that it's doing that faded effect that you usually see in Visco. So see, it fades out the blacks or the shadows or the low points. If you're a legit photographer and you're looking at how I explain all the editing, then I hope that you don't bash me if I'm explaining it wrong. I'm not going to Basically, I didn't watch any tutorials on how to do curves because the best way for you to understand tone curving is really when you play around with the curves yourself. Just don't be afraid to just keep playing around with all the different points that you're making. But if nakamalika, you could always just left click and delete control point and that it'll go back to normal. Or if you want to delete everything, then you could just flatten curve and it's back to normal. But we don't want to do that because it's hard to do. So there you go. Some people go really, really detailed and they toggle each color. So this one is for the reds. You can see all the colors. It controls the reds of the photos and then you could also do it with the greens and the blues but that's honestly if you just want to edit for Instagram you can easily do all of that with just controlling the color anyways and the hue saturation and luminance you can do that as well or you could just add highlights and shadows on the split toning so if you're not so familiar with curves yet then I recommend that you just stick to the RGB first and then when you're feeling more adventurous and a little bit more confident then go for gold and then next up is I do the sharpening. So this is where you control the amount of sharpening that you want to get. So you see, if you stare at this part like my face, let's zoom in on that. See? This is the lowest point of the amount of sharpening. But if you put that higher, then ayan siya. It's super duper sharp. But also, it gets kind of grainy and it makes it look like I have so much like body hair na wala naman talaga dyan. So I like to put it just a little bit like here lang. Sa mga around yan, 46, 47. Or actually medyo mga 50 plus. There you go. And then, what I like to do is, I like to toggle masking. I don't know how to do it on Windows, sorry. So if you press on the Option key while you drag the masking bar, so you'll see the white parts are the sharper edges and the black parts are what they're trying to blur or smoothen out. So I want it to be kind of like this down. So yeah, If you turn it off, the masking, you'll see that the edges are more defined. Like even these. But if you 
bring up the masking and you'll see na like these surfaces are smoother and then I also do a little bit of noise reduction just because I like my photos smooth and I don't like a lot of noise I'm really not into that grainy look yet well every now and then I do it but yeah oh I forgot this one if you want to do lens corrections usually whatever you're shooting with like mirrorless cameras or DSLR and you have these lenses like wide-angle lenses they do get kind of distorted so you could just do enable profile corrections for me it doesn't really do much because the Leica is perfect so <laughs> no yeah but you could just do that and then you can change like okay this is probably like closest that I could get is like Leica S let's say you could not it is that do you see how it moves the screen so basically it kind of corrects it but me I don't really need that much for Leica so I don't use it before when I was using my Sony I'd always always use it it just makes it look more natural especially the proportions and then you can also choose to have vignetting so vignette is when you want the edges to be a bit darker or brighter no one usually uses that because unless you want to look like you're in heaven sometimes if you want a more dramatic feel then you bring down the amount of the vignette so you kind of darken the edges as you can see here you can just play around with all of this this is the cropping tool so for instagram i always set it at four by five that's the most you can get out of the ratios that instagram allow you Ta-da! So there you go. We've got our brightness and everything done. Now we can do our colors. So basically, you can start off with your white balance or here in the camera calibration towards the end. For me, this is a bit on the cooler side. This is the existing temperature right now. So I want to increase it just a tiny little bit more just to make it a little bit warmer. So there you go. I'm okay with the tints and greens. Let's say I'm going to toggle the pinks or the greens and I just want to make it a little bit more on this side. And then I'd be like, mm, parang I don't like, let's go to the original. You could easily just double click and it goes back to its original value. So you could do that wherever here. Usually I start off with a white balance and then I go to the camera calibration and here I check out all these parts. So the red primary, the green primary, and the blue primary. So this is like the overall control system for your colors. So I personally like my reds, let's say a little bit more here towards the yellowish side. And then you can bring up or down the color. So if you bring this up, then all the oranges and the reds become more saturated. If you put it down, then they get desaturated. After the red primary, I usually head to the blues because I used to have like a teal orange feed. So that's why parang creature of habit. So reds and the blues are usually what I toggle the most. So I go to the blues first. So if you go towards this, then it, the blues become more cyan or more greener. And then if you go here to the towards the right, then it becomes purplish, you see? And it also affects your reds and your yellows and your oranges. If you like a teal orange color, then you go here. And personally, I like it better when the sky is a bit more on the teal side than on the purplish dull side. And then for the greens, you have to pay attention to your pinks or your reds. It becomes more magenta if you go towards the greener side of the green primary. And the greens also become more bluish. And then if you go down, then the greens become more yellowish. This is the fun part. I personally love this part. Toggling the hue, saturation, luminance. So you can do it one by one like this. But for me, I like it with the all tab so you see all of them the hue saturation and luminance all at once so this is really where your understanding of color will come in personally i like the reds a bit more towards the red so that when i'm wearing red lipstick you really see it super duper red and then i saturate it a bit more don't worry you'll see that my skin is getting super affected as well because of course orange has red right so it also affects that you can easily control this when you get to your oranges and your yellows so luminance is basically how bright you want it to be or like how black you want it to be so for me i like my reds kind of bright so let's put it here and then for my oranges i like the luminance to be a bit lower so that's how you get a tan See how fair I am here, but here I am not. So that's how you get a tan. You put the luminance down. I know. Oh, oh, oh. No, just medyo iba na yun. Because I moved my reds toward the reds, yung orange ko na apektuhan, so it's kind of looking a bit more red as well. So I'm compensating for that by making it a little bit more yellow. And I personally don't like it super saturated. So before, after. Look at that difference. And then for the yellows, I like to bring up the luminance of yellow because 
I feel like with most of my photos, I have a lot of yellows and when I bring up the yellow, then it kind of brightens my photo as well. Blues, for it comes to the hues, the sky, I like it a bit more towards the cyan. But if I put it there, because I already toggled the blues here in the camera calibration, it is already looking kind of cyan. So let's compensate a bit by putting it up. And then the aqua, we can also put it a bit more towards the cyan. And then let's put the saturation a bit lower and the blues as well, a bit lower. And you can play around with the luminance. If you bring it up too much, then you lose all your clouds. If you want to show more of your clouds, then you can bring down the luminance. I don't like it when it's super green, so I make it a little bit bluer and always, always desaturate my greens. Purples and pinks don't really show up a lot in my photos. So I don't really toggle this so much, but it's the same concept as the rest. So up to you how you want to go for it. So you can see that it's super different already. And then I like to make my vibrance a little bit lower. So if you make your vibrance higher, then it becomes really saturated or really, really bright. But I like it a bit more dramatic, so I put my vibrance lower. And then you can put your saturation higher if you want, but it gets really yellow. So I also like to just either saturate it a little bit like this or desaturate it. And then bawi na lang when I'm editing here sa baba. But let's put it back to zero. So as you can see, my reds became duller, so I want to bring it up again. There you go! I want it a bit more yellowish as well so that it makes it feel like it's a sunny day in Lisbon. So now that you have basically parang yan na yung coloring niya, you could still go back to your previous edit and just make it look a little bit more like how you want it to look. So that's looking kind of good now. Now let's do the split toning where you can control the highlights and the shadows, like the overall color. So if I want it to look like a hot Portuguese afternoon, then we gotta make a little yellow-orange highlight. But now, if you look at my pants, parang namatay yung color, right? The blue became so dull as compared to its original color. Here enters your selective edits. These are the three that I usually use on Lightroom. So they have the graduated filter, the radial filter, and the brush. So because it's specifically for this, I'm gonna use the brush. So I want it to be a bit brighter and less violet, more cyan. So I go to color. You can also toggle the exposure, contrast, everything for that specific brush. You can also control the size. Feather means how blurred the sides of that brush gets. So how gradually this appears towards the side of that brush. And then flow, I honestly don't know. So <laughs> I don't use that. You also use the density of like how powerful you want the effect to be. So I'm gonna bring it up. And there you go. So just dahan dahan lang sa pag brush. If you want like a specific marker so that you'll see where you're brushing, lubag pas ka ba or anything, just go here and just click on show selected mask. So it's gonna highlight the part that you're coloring. It's not actually red. It's just showing you here what you've already brushed or which areas you've already applied the brush on. Ta -da! So it's much more bluer. I want to bring up the shadows as well just to make it a little bit brighter. Okay, see, if I show you how it was without the brush, it was like this. Now it's like this now. Oh, modern technology, ladies and gents. And then I also like to bring up the shadows, bring down the contrast, bring up the clarity for my bag because it's got a nice Dior print and I want to show it off. Now, for example, Lumag Pasca, you could easily erase here and just click erase. The gradual filter, this rectangular thing, I'll turn on the red thing so you guys can see. This top part is where the effect is the strongest and then it gradually disappears. So that's where you use the gradual filter for. Let's say I want this top part, as you can see, the cloud here is a bit darker than the clouds here. And I want this to be a little bit kind of like this part where it's brighter. We got a new one, it's all there. So I put this gradual filter. Let's turn off the selected mask overlay so you'll see. As you can see, na apektohan pa rin this part because there's still part of the gradual filter there. If I don't want that to be part of it, I could also easily erase. I just go to the brush part of that same gradial filter, go to brush, erase, 
and then you can erase from here. I'll turn on the selected mask so you'll see. So you could just erase. There you go. This radial filter is the round filter. So if I turn on the selected mask overlay as well, you'll see. So this is the radial filter. You'll see that the strongest part is towards the center and then it disperses or like gradually disappears towards the outer part of the circle. You can also toggle the feather. So feather is like how blurred out you want it to be. Like it feathers out. So the higher the feathering is, so the closer to 100, then it gets even more seamless. Yung pag blend in niya with its surroundings. Because if you lessen the filter, you see, it's legit around things. So for example, if I put up the exposure, yan yung ginawa ko. Because you didn't feather at all. So it doesn't blend well. As opposed to, let's say, if you feather it, so just so you guys can see what I mean. If you feather it, see, it's seamless. You don't really see it. So one nice use for the radial filter is when you want to create like a fake sunlight effect. So let's say I want to make it seem like there's some sun action happening here. So I'll make it a little bit more yellow. I'll add a color also here maybe. I'll take up the whites, highlights, and then put down the clarity. Because you know how where the sun is coming from, it always kind of blurs out the surroundings. So then in shot. Oh, I forgot to say also that you have to invert mask. Because if not, then it's the ones outside of the circle that's being affected. But if you invert mask, it's the one that's inside the circle. So see? Kind of looks like there's already like a sun source happening here. But I'm not feeling it, so let's delete it. I'm just teaching you guys how to use it. So this is how our photo is looking now. But because of the split toning, it's a bit too yellowish for my taste. So bababa natin yung white balance to blue. So it kind of tames that down. There's also too much redness happening. So let's bring down the white balance also. Just final touches. And some more nifty tools that I like to use on Lightroom. So I'm clearly wearing contact lenses, but whenever I shoot, it's not so clear, especially if I'm shooting an OOTD. So what I like to do is to bring out my contacts, and I use the pre-existing brush called Iris Enhance. So then I put the Iris Enhance, and I use the brush. You can also use the radial filter, but I personally like the brush so that I can just select this part. I don't like to brighten my entire eye, so just there. And then bring up the exposure just a little bit more. There you go. And my contacts are clearly seen now. See? I'll turn it off so you guys can see. And ta-da! And then let's say you'd see that I don't have much hair there now. It's so I can burn. So basically burning is darkening it. So let's just darken it a little bit. And then let's say you also want to smoothen your skin. You could use the soften skin feature here. And then just soften over the parts that you want softened. I personally don't like doing that. So I'm just showing you guys what you can do. I don't like doing it because I feel like it takes away my highlights and my contour. So I don't do it so much. I personally like to also use the radial filter just to bring the attention to me or to my face instead of my surroundings. So I put it here and then I bring up the shadows just a tiny little bit and the exposure. So it's nice to create more light towards the center or where you are so that the attention of the people who are looking at the photo goes directly to you instead of your background. And then I'm ready to add my dramatic vignette. Ta -da! And that's it! Here's the before and the after. Before, after. And that's it! I hope that you guys like this tutorial. It's just the basics of how you can use Lightroom. I just wanted to give you guys the right tools so that you can also find your own presets and find your own filters that suit your taste or your preference. Honestly, it's so, so addicting. The possibilities are endless, meaning the filters and the presets are also limitless. I actually have made so many presets and filters for myself because I got so addicted to creating all these different types of colors and feels and moods and vibes. So if you guys start thinking 
tinkering with Lightroom the way I tinker with Lightroom all the time, then please make sure to tag me on your photos. I would love to see the results of our tutorial. I would feel so, so proud of my camp fam. So just tag me, leave me a comment below, give me a thumbs up. That's it for today's tutorial. And see you guys on my next vlog. Bye, camp fam! Everyone can finally speak. <laughs> oh no, you scared Pixie! <laughs> Everyone had to shut up because I was vlogging. Hi, Pen Pen. Come here. Come here, my love. Mm.